know. <laughs> Please stand and join us as we worship today. One, two, three, and... faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Children, remember your promise, oh God. Sing it out. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. strong you lead us in the song of your salvation and all your people sing along so remember your people remember your children remember your promise oh God morning. everybody. As we pray this morning, let's remember Paulette Hart, Mary Rose Balch, Shirley Young, Sonny and Shelby Jones, Levi Bearden, Stephen Ann Smith, Jerry and Trish Price, Philip Sieber, Louise Griggs, Joan Frank, Archie Emery, Robert Huff. Continue to remember uh, my, my pal Jay Barbier. He has, uh, he has cancer and it's returned and it's come back. It's now stage four. It's in his lungs. So remember Jay and Natalie and the family. And then remember Doug Williams. Doug had surgery on his hand and he's in a whole lot of pain. So, so please remember Mr. Doug. Let's go to the God in prayer this morning. Father, thank you so much.
for who you are and for how you are to us. Lord, you're loving, you're gracious, you're so full of mercy. Things that we don't deserve, you give them so freely. Lord, we lift up this list to you. And names that are not on this list for whatever reason, God, you know our hearts and you know our needs. Meet those needs today, we pray. God, if, if it's not according to your will, anything that will bring you glory is what we seek. So God, selfishly, we want healing. Selfishly, we want, um, yeah, we, 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 just, we want life. We want healing. But Lord, if it's not your will, just bring glory to yourself. And God, uh, it's a, that's a hard prayer to pray, pray sometimes, but, but that's earnestly what we desire is we want to see you high and lifted up. So God, if that's any way that will bring people closer to you or bring them to repentance, we pray that you'll just get the glory out of it. We love you. We praise your name. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. I'm going to ask Mr. John Boyle if he'll come up. He has an announcement really fast. Today we have a special event right after church. When you go out into the foyer and you leave here, our pastor search committee will be passing out these church search surveys. And we hope that if you're an adult, you will get one. If you're a teenager, you will get one. Your, your uh, opinion is important just like your, your, your adults are. So get, get one of these, fill it out, and if you can bring it back tonight, fine, bring it back tonight. If you can't, bring it back next Sunday. We hope we can get as many of them back next Sunday as we can. So it's a front and a back. So when you get to filling it out, be sure and do the front and the back. So that'll be right as you go out into the foyer after they take the special call business meeting this, this morning. As you leave here, we'll be back there to pass these out. So be sure to get one. Thank you. Mr. John just talked about the special call business meeting right after this morning's service, so stick around for that. Um, we will probably ask all the guests to, to leave, and the members will, will vote during this, uh, this business meeting right after this morning's service. Remember that evening activities resume tonight. The youth group is going to be talking about why do people do dumb things. That was, uh, that was yeah, that, so wives, don't, don't bring your husbands. It's not one of those things. Uh, but why do people do dumb things? And I, I saw this question. The, the, these are all written out by the teenagers, by the way. These were questions that they wanted to ask or that they wanted to talk about this semester. And one was just, why do people do dumb things? And I, I laughed at it when I first saw it. And then I started thinking about it like, man, that's going to get really deep. <laughs> we're going to talk a lot about the garden today. So, so you all come at 6 and let's talk about why do people do dumb things. Um, hey, kids, Dan, Danny. Yes, sir. Not related to that. Choir is going to meet tonight. So, <laughs> not related. Not in related any... to that at all. <laughs> choir resumes. Yeah. So. <laughs> not related in any way. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Facebook Live is this Wednesday. Um, today is not Kristen Reinhardt's birthday. It's Andrew Reinhardt's birthday. So if you see in your bul your bulletin where it says Kristen, just disregard that part. We love Kristen, but we also love Andrew. Happy birthday today, pal. All right, today is the last day that yearly contribution statements for 2023 will be available at the Welcome Center. The ones that are left will be mailed to you. If you feel that you should have one but don't see yours, please contact Paula at the church office. And then it is time to start sending in camp deposits if any youth or children ages third grade through fifth are interested in attending either Centrikid or Centrifuge, Centrikid being for the kids, Centrifuge being for the youth, let me or Kristen know ASAP and we're going to do the deposits at $50 each so if you're interested in going to camp please see me or Kristen and let's get those deposits in and then finally the church life app on your phone is no longer what we should be using for online giving in fact I don't believe you can give through the church life app anymore please go to the church website if you'd like to give online also please download the realm connect app so instead of the Church Life app on our phones, we're now going to be using the Realm Connect app. Okay? It isn't up and running at full speed yet, but it will replace the Church Life app. So you can give through that when it's up and running. All right. Mr. Davis.
Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we come to you in prayer, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you for your son and what he did for us there on that cross that day, dear Heavenly Father. Father, we pray now for our, our morning service, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask you to bind Satan out of this building right now, dear Heavenly Father. And for Jonathan as he brings the music to us this morning, and Brother Mike as he brings our sermon to us this morning, just if there is one that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that today might be the day that they come to know you, dear Heavenly Father. Father, for each and every person that's represented here in this audience this morning, dear and Father, give us strength, guidance, wisdom, and knowledge as we go forth for this coming week. And for these tithes and offerings that we're about to take up, we hope they'll be used to further thy kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to teach you this course before we uh, get into our regular worship, and I want you guys to learn it because it's going to come back a little bit later. It goes like this. Upon this rock you build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Jesus name we will not fail let's try it again upon this rock you build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Jesus name we will not fail one more time upon this rock you build church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and then names us name we will not fail we will not fail Christ is my firm foundation. Go ahead and stand. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Because he's never let me down. He's a faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? Uh, he won't. He won't. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. And he's never let me down. He's faithful in every season. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? Uh, he won't. He won't. He won't fail, he won't fail, uh, he won't, he won't, uh, he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't. Rain came, a wind blew, but my house was built on you. And I'm safe with you, 
I'm gonna make it through Rain came, wind blew But my house was built on you And I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through I'm gonna make it through Cause I'm standing strong on you Yes, I'm gonna make it through Cause my hope is built on you And Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? Sing it out! He won't He won't He won't fail He won't fail He won't He won't He won't fail me now He won't fail me now He won't fail Amen. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is the new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one and a mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one oh happy ones and holies Lord give us grace that we like them the meek and lowly on I may dwell with thee. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. And greater things have yet to come. Greater things have still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things have still be done here. You're the God of the city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. no one like our God. Oh, there is no one like our God. And greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this There 
is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things here now. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things it's still to be done. Upon this rock you build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Jesus name we will not fail one more time upon this rock you build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Jesus name we will not fail and in Jesus name we will not fail one more time and in Jesus' name, we will not fail. And all of God's people said, Amen. Would you be seated just for a moment, please? Thank you, Jonathan, and praise band for the worship, leading us in worship this morning. That final song that we had sung earlier is almost a singable edition of the text that we'll read in just a moment. But let me begin by saying, I love the church. I love the church because it's a glorious bride. It's a great brotherhood. It's a good band. It's a gritty battalion. It's a growing body. And it's a grand building. And the grand building part is why I'm beginning a new series this morning called Under Construction. Under Construction. Let's build a new church. Somebody's immediately thinking, oh, right. So some other new facility on these grounds. Yes, but I'm not talking about a physical church. I'm talking about the church that Jesus Christ speaks of in Matthew Chapter 16, beginning with verse 18, and I invite you to turn to that as you stand with me and honor God's good word this morning. Would you stand with me, please? Matthew 16, beginning with the 18th verse. A number of years ago, I was in the Holy Land and stood with a group of people in an area called Caesarea Philippi. It was an area that once... Uh, was even entitled the gates of hell because some pagan temples had been built in the side of a mountain there in a plain area where Jesus had met with his disciples right there and said, who do men say that I am? And they answered different things. And Simon Peter, always the impulsive one, said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said what he says in the text today. So let's read that. And I say unto you that you are Peter, Simon Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. That's just what we've been singing this morning. And then Jesus added, and I give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Please bow with me as we pray. Jesus, we've sung these words. We've listened to these words. Please help us to comprehend 
you building your church. Lord, we want to be a part of it. We want to have something to do with it. And so we ask you to show us how you're building your church, how we're under construction, and what we're to do about it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. One of the oldest nursery rhymes around is the nursery rhyme that says, this is the house that Jack built. I think it was back in the 1500s that nursery rhyme began. You know, it's uh, that says, this is the house that Jack built and had some sacks of grain or some of the versions of it said cheese and a rat that ate the grain or the cheese and a cat that chased the rat and a dog that worried the cat and a cow that tossed the dog and a maiden who milked the cow and a young man who kissed the maiden and a preacher who married them both and a farmer who grew corn and uh, what? There was a horse and a hound and a rooster too and how they all got connected is a mystery to you, me and you. So, uh, and, and you know when we think about the house that Jack built and that's a nursery rhyme we think about the truth of the house that Jesus built. The church that Jesus is building today. What is that? Well, we're in this series that we begin today called Under Construction, and we focus this day on the church that Jesus builds. What kind of church is it? Number one, the church that Jesus builds is solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. We could hear, say an amen to that. Amen. It's solid as a rock. And that's what we've been singing about. Jonathan, thank you so much for th those songs that remind us that Jesus said, Upon this rock, I will build my church. Was he talking about the rocky area there, Caesarea Philippi? Was he talking about some mountain, some solid mountain somewhere? No, he was talking about what Simon Peter had just said, the confession that Simon Peter had made. You are the Christ the Son of the living God, and Jesus was saying, on this kind of confession, on this testimony, on this witness, I will build my church. You know, when I think about Jesus building his church, I think about the A, B, C, D, E's of Jesus building his church. Notice the architect. Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus didn't say, pastors will build my church. Jesus didn't say deacons will build my church. Jesus didn't say elected leaders will build my church. Jesus didn't say older people will build my church. Middle agers, young adults, teenagers, children. Jesus said, I will build my church. The builder, the founder, the architect, the designer of the church of Jesus Christ, which is not a physical building as we know it. You know, when I was a little boy growing up in church, the teachers taught us a little rhyme and we did it with our hands. We said, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors and where are the people? I guess it was Wednesday night. Nobody showed up. And, and then we did it like this. We said, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors and there are all the people. Well, that's cool. One thing about it, it ain't so. It's a good thing, but the truth is this. We ought to be saying it like this. Here's the church, and here's the steeple, and that's just the church building. Open the doors, and there's the real church, because the church is people. The church is designed with Jesus Christ being the architect, and us being a part of the building. We're under construction. There's a song teenagers and young adults used to sing. He's still working on me. Making me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make, you know, all of creation. But he's still working on me. He's building his church. We are under construction. And he is the architect. Who are the builders? Well, the builders would be Jesus also. But then he has co-workers. The Apostle Paul said, I am a co-worker with Christ. I am a 
corporate builder. I'm helping to build the church of Jesus. And then Simon Peter said, you are living stones. And so I will refer to that in just a moment. But the fact that, that, that the Bible teaches us that the church is made up of living stones, living people. And so the builders are living persons like Paul and like you and like you and like me. We are all the builders, co-laborers with Christ Jesus. What about the construction process itself? Well, the construction process is that God is shaping us down here so we can fit up there. He is, you remember the story of a man who walked up on somebody and he was knocking uh, something off of a brick, uh, building a building, and the man said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm shaping this down here so it will fit up there, a little opening in the brick. That's what Jesus is doing with his church, shaping us down here so we will fit up there. He's building his church. He's growing his church. His church, he's the main architect, yes. He's the main builder, yes. But he calls us to be a part of the construction process. And what a blessing that is to be a part of it. And then there's the demolition because Jesus goes on to say, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, this church is strong. This church, you know, uh, you see sometimes a, a building that's going to be built and they have a demolition crew in there first. You see a big crane with a big heavy weight on it knocking down walls. Well, I believe one of the things the church is to be doing is we're to be knocking down some walls. What are some walls the church ought to be knocking down? Well, walls of racism, walls of elitism, walls of cynicism, walls of humanism. These are some of the walled gates, so to speak, that would come up against the church. But Jesus said, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. The church will conquer those. The church is a demolition crew as well as a construction crew. And thank God for that. And then there's the edifice itself. An edifice is usually some kind of imposing building. Well, the edifice of the church is, as I said earlier, people. Young people. Old people. Middle-aged people. White-haired people, crazy-haired people, no-haired people. The, the church of Jesus is made up of you and me. We are a, such a vital and important part of Christ's church that Simon Peter said, and that's what I was going to refer to, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. That's where Simon Peter said, you are living stones. You are, you are the church of Jesus Christ. And what is it somebody said years ago? What would my church be if every member were just like me? Well, we are the church. You are the church. Yes, we're in an interim period. We're searching for a pastor. And yes, God has out there a permanent senior pastor for you. But how is he going to get here? He's going to get here as we, the church, Seek God's face, and as we the church pray, as we are the living stones that church uses, that God uses as the church. So the first thing is, the church that Jesus builds is solid as a rock. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. But the second thing is, the church that Jesus builds is stronger than hell. It's stronger than hell. I hesitated a little bit to use that particular phrase because sometimes people would use something in profanity like that. But I'm using it because that's what Jesus said. He said, and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I've, I've been curious about that through the years. Gates prevailing. You know, generally you go through gates. Gates are something you enter into. The Bible says, enter into the courts of the Lord and into his gates with thanksgiving. You, you think about entering in. But here, Jesus is talking about gates that are moving. Gates that are destroying. 
gates that are coming against God and God's people, the gates of hell. There's a verse in the Bible that says uh, that, the gate, that, that hell is being enlarged. In other words, more and more every day people are dying and they're going to hell and hell is swelling. It is increasing more and more. Anybody who doesn't believe that, just turn on the television or go to any screen that you have that identifies the culture and you will see that the gates of hell are expanding. But Jesus said, when I build my church, it's going to be stronger than the gates of hell. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Y'all, Satan and all of his demons and all of his forces are not as strong as Christ Jesus and his church. Not my church, not your church, his church. And when we think about it being his church, we just say, Lord Jesus, thank you that it is stronger than hell. I have a, a phrase that I want you to keep in, in your mind. And here, here comes the, this phrase. Let's make Spring Hill First Baptist Church a hard place to get to hell from. Let's make Spring Hill, Tennessee a hard place to get to hell from. How easy do you think it is to get to hell from Spring Hill, Tennessee? It's pretty easy. Look at some of the family situations. Look at some of the crises in our culture. Look at some of the news that's happening all around us. You turn on the Nashville news, and what are the first five items on the news? Some kind of violence, some kind of murder, some kind of robbery. Are, are we seeing that Middle Tennessee and particularly Spring Hill, Tennessee, is an easy place for children who've reached the account, age of accountability to go to hell from? Is it an easy place for teenagers who know right from wrong and have chosen the wrong to go to hell from? Is it an easy place for adult men and women, singles, marriage, to go to hell from? I'm afraid now it is. And yet I believe that the church of Jesus Christ, we have a goal to make our city, we're singing about our city, to make our city a hard place to get to hell from. A place where people find it easy to be on their way to heaven where people are convicted of their sins and they're drawn to the cross of Jesus Christ and drawn to the Christ of that cross. Y'all, with God's help, let's make Spring Hill a hard place to get to hell from. Amen? Amen. So those first two things, when Jesus builds his church, it's going to be solid as a rock. When Jesus builds his church, it's going to be stronger than hell. And then the third thing is, when Jesus builds his church, it's going to sound a lot like heaven. It's going to sound a lot like heaven. What, what did Jesus say? He said, I say to you, you are Simon Peter, and on this rock, your confession, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give you, Simon Peter made this confession, church of Jesus Christ, making this confession, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed on heaven. I added a little bit to that phrasing because that's exactly the way Jesus said it in the verbs he uses. What you bind will have been bound and what you loose will have been loosed because I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. If you have keys with you today, ladies in your purse, or men in your pocket, would you take them out just for a minute? Go ahead and just kind of rumble around. I know you ladies will have to really dig down and your men have keys in your pocket. Uh, take them out. Try not to rattle them just for a minute or two, please. Uh, just kind of ease them out and hold them in your hand. And I left mine in there on the, the desk in the pastor's office. Uh, all right, take those keys and just hold them up and shake them here a little bit. Would you do that? Listen to what we're hearing. Listen, yeah, keep on doing it. You know what you're hearing? 
you're hearing the rattling of keys. Do you know when the church is being the church? <laughs> you know when the church is being, you can put them up. Yeah, that's good. The church is being the church when we hear things that sound like heaven. What sounds like heaven? Well, keys. Keys to doors opening and keys to doors closing. What did Jesus mean by saying that? I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you loose on earth, will have been loosed in heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. Here's what I believe Jesus meant. The church of Jesus Christ that he's building looks over into heaven. You know, we pray in the model prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, say it with me, on earth as it is in heaven. What is happening in heaven? God's will is perfectly being done. What is the church supposed to be about? Perfectly doing the will of God here on this earth. What is God's will? The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What should be one of the things the church of Jesus is doing? Leading people to faith in Jesus Christ. You and I, our worship services, our Sunday school classes, all of our ministry, everything that we do needs to be geared toward bringing other people to Christ. The key to the kingdom is that other people will be loosed from those things that Satan would do to bind them and would be free to do the will of God. And that cannot happen unless they come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So a church that's winning souls is a church that's rattling the keys. A church that's loosing and binding, binding Satan, binding those things that would detract from the gospel, binding those areas that are loose in the world where Satan has gotten loose, binding him. Oftentimes we hear even in this church people praying, Lord, bind Satan today. Well, how does he do that? He does that with the church being the church. That which Jesus is building being uh, that which ought to be happening in our lives. I don't know if you uh, remember a song, a country song a few years ago by Martina McBride called The House That Built Me. She apparently was going back to a home she lived in as a little girl and asking to visit that home. The idea of the song is back then our family had some crises, and we learned how to go through those crises. Now here I am, an adult, and I'm going through some crises. I need to be back in this home, and I, hey, said to the new owners, I won't take anything except memories. I won't bother anything. I just want to walk through and have another look at the house that built me. Well, I'm here today in a house that built me. Not Spring Hill Baptist. I've just gotten to know you better in recent months and hope to get you know, know you better in coming months. But I'm talking about the physical, spiritual, human beings who make up the church of Jesus. And I look back over my life and I thank God for the church that Jesus has built. The house that built me. I think about a little boy, nine years old son of an alcoholic dad and a saintly mom and hearing the story of Jesus and his love in RAs, Royal Ambassadors, and in an initiation where I was taught that Jesus Christ would lift burdens off of my back and that Jesus Christ would shed light in my darkness and if I trusted him, he would be my guide and my Lord and my Savior. And just a few weeks later, in a church in Spartanburg, South Carolina, I walked forward and took the hand of my pastor and gave the heart of my soul, myself to Jesus Christ. And he baptized me a few weeks later on Easter Sunday. And I've been growing and developing 
And I felt the call to preach as a high school student in church one youth weekend, youth revival weekend. And I asked God to use me in ministry. And I went off to a school that was a Baptist Christian college. And there I met my wife who was also there pursuing God's will in her life. And then together we went to New Orleans Seminary where practically all of my tuition was paid by monies that had been given by churches so that young men and women could be trained to serve the Lord Jesus. And then I began a ministry that was a pastoral ministry years and years and years. And I look back and I think, Lord, the church that you're building, it's the house that built me. And I owe so much to the church of Jesus Christ. I think about people who taught Sunday school lessons. I think about a group of squirming little old boys and teachers that would be patient with us. And I think about one particular one that uh, allowed us to come and visit his and his wife's home. And oftentimes after church, we'd go by and have lunch. And he had no reason to invest his life in little boys like me with nothing really to offer. I mean, I was shy and I was intimidated. I had an inferiority complex about being a skinny kid and not being good at sports. I mean, this teacher didn't have any reason to invest in the likes of me, but you see, he did. And he was a part of the house that built me, the house that helped me to grow and uh, get over my inferiority complex, even though it took some time because those things do. Do uh, you remember about the psychiatrist who was talking with this guy and said, listen, listen, listen. I know you say you, you, you think you have an inferiority complex. But listen, you don't have a complex. You are inferior. Well, some of us sometimes, uh, we, uh, we, we tend to hear that kind of thing and it goes in and sticks with us and stays with us. And I really guess I thought I was inferior rather than just having a, a complex. But what I'm saying is the church, RA leaders, Sunday school teachers, deacons who were faithful to the task, those who sang in the choir, those who took youth on trips and took us to retreats and yeah, I, over and over again, the church that built me and Jesus is still building his church that's building other lives for the glory of the kingdom of God. And how I thank God for the house that builds us and we're so thrilled to be a part of it. So. The church of Jesus Christ, the one he's building, I'm telling you, is solid as a rock. Hallelujah. It's stronger than hell. Praise his name. It is sounding a lot like heaven in the keys rattling, the doors opening, the doors closing. I tell you, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. In a moment, we're going to stand and sing that song and we're going to sing it offering to every person here an opportunity to come through the doors of the kingdom of God, to respond to the gospel of Jesus. I believe there's somebody here today who for some reason has never yet given your heart to Jesus. We appeal to you. I cry out to you. Let this be a day of salvation in your life. When we're singing about Christ Jesus building on this church, on this solid rock of confession, won't you make that confession today? Whether you're a boy or girl or a teenager or a man or woman, we'll sing it for you and invite you to come. Maybe today you're ready to join this church. Well, I would say, what better day to join the church of Jesus Christ than today? Maybe you've been attending here but have never become a member. This would be a great day to do it. Maybe today you just want to come and kneel here at these steps or the front seats here and pledge anew your life to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's building. If so, we invite you to do it. P pray with me, please, just for a moment. Let's bow as we pray. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful to you that you're building your church. It's a glorious church. It's a great church that you're building. It's not a church that's uh, weak and watered down and giving in to Satan. It's not a church that can't prevent people from going to hell. It's a church, Lord, that can make Spring Hill a hard place to get to hell from. And Lord, I pray 
that you will allow us to do it. Allow us to build on this firm foundation, Lord Jesus, that you're making. Our hope is built on nothing less, and we're grateful for that today. Father, help those of us who need to respond during the singing of this song to do so. Give us the courage. Lord, it may be a boy or a girl, it may be a teenager or a man or a woman. Give us the courage to say yes to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand together.